We're recording. Okay. Hi, everyone. Happy first day of school. Happy, happy last first day of school to our seniors. To our senior night. Thank you so much for coming. We know that it, it can be difficult. It's a long day for everybody. First day of school, um, really long day. I don't know how the adults felt, but I felt very tired. I'm not used to interacting with so many people uh, in one day. So thank you all for coming. I want to start off tonight by introducing Mr. Shea, uh, our new high school principal. And he's just going to go over a couple of housekeeping items before we really get into the nuts and bolts of our senior night tonight. Thank you. Thank you everyone for attending tonight. That's not the right way. Um, it's awesome to be here. I'm excited as the new principal. For those of you who don't know, really quick, they laugh at me because they take way too long in the introduction. Uh, three and a half years at Albany High, two years at Warwick Academy down in Hudson, which was an alternative school that we actually built from the ground up. And then six and a half years as a social studies and special ed teacher I'm at the high school level. So that's just the gist of my background. Um, super excited about a great day. It was the first day in a year and a half that we had full staff and students in the building. So it was felt a little hectic, but in a good way. Um, so it was very cool. And it was our seniors, you know, first last day is, right? Last first day, I guess. Um, that's how that works. So just a few things on my end. There's my email, my phone number, and extension. Feel free to contact me anytime with any questions. Um, I will say if it's after like seven o'clock at night, if it's an emergency, I'll probably wait till the next day. Um, but so really quick, attendance. Make sure you guys come every day. It's important, it's, it's, it's critical. I know as a senior, your senior year, you kind of want to relax and get that senioritis as the year goes on. Um, but it is important that you're, you're here and you're attending and you're getting all that stuff you need. Um, and if there is anything with attendance that's an issue, Please contact Ms. Champion at the main office. She's our attendance clerk. We all know her, I'm sure. She'll be happy to help with anything, and I can as well. Uh, parking. Parking passes get done in the guidance office by Mrs. Uh, Jen Smith. Um, and then in the back, they're assigned, and making sure that if you, if you arrive late, leave without any type of parent permission or adult permission, um, you can lose your uh, parking permit. Um, probably a warning the first time, and I'll call home to let your parents know or your guardian know. And then there's the 30, 60, and then it's, you know, your training. I'm sorry, ADD after a long day. Uh, so then we'll, you know, go through that. So I'm pretty fair with that. I do like if you know things happen, so if you're late or something goes on, just, you know, loop me in as, the, as your principal and we can work through that. And then uh, late arrival, early dismissal. So we're working through some of the logistics on that. I do want to make this a pretty much a upper class in um, privilege. And so if you have a study hall at the first, or first or last of the day, we're going to work through. We'll get that stuff out and kind of tidy up the plan to make that tight. But as long as you have um, enough credits during the day, which how many is that again? We talked about this morning. So if you meet that and you're in good standing, your attendance is great, we'll have a few other small things on there, then I'll be happy to sign that off so you can come in later or arrive or leave early to go to work or you know do something like that or get ready for, for sports or what have you. Um, so I'll tidy that up. That'll be, we'll work tomorrow on that. And just today I was busy moving around. So those are my three items. Uh, any questions for me? It's been a long day, I've been here six, so. Again, if anything does come up, seniors or parents, just shoot me an email or stop by the office. I am pretty um, visible and I am around the building. If you're never really in my office, I've been in the hallway and in the classrooms all day. So I think that's it. So it was great to see everyone tonight. Um, stay dry out there. We're supposed to get up to an inch of rain tonight. Who knew? I know. I know. It's crazy, right? It is. Anyway, um, I'm going to pass it off because your time is valuable, so I don't want to take any more of your time than I have to. All right, everyone, so before we really get into the nuts and bolts of today's program, I just want to point out we have some handouts out up on the cart by the 
entrance to the path. So up there you should see, or hopefully you grab it your way in, there's a PowerPoint for tonight's presentation. There's also a sheet of information for seniors that is that was put together by Ms. Bolin. She is our yearbook advisor this year. So your sheet there talks about senior portraits, some yearbook information. Um, as far as the students go, uh, myself and Mr. Lawrence are the senior class advisors. And in addition with Mrs. Bolin, we are going to uh, have our class of 2022 uh, Google Classroom. So we'll definitely love to push out a lot of information through uh, our Google Classroom for the kids. Um, and then the last half sheet of blue piece of paper up there, that is just the feedback form for tonight. Um, Mrs. Hanson, do you want to come talk now? What? Oh, and Mr. Kelly got pen. We thought it'd be helpful if you didn't have one. So you can fill out our form. Do you want to come talk now? It really is raining. Really quick, before I go, oh, I can't oh, stop. Oh. Hey, go, don't go too far, it's really quick. Also, I recognize this, you've had a rough year and a half as seniors especially, so we're looking to do some fun things this year, just for you guys, to make, kind of try to make up for the craziness of the last year and a half. All right, I'm done. Here are again. Yep. Hello. So, for once, I'm not here to discuss PTA with you. Woo! That would be something new. Uh, but I did on PTA's behalf today get to come to school and give your kids, or offer your kids, their very last first day of school of ice cream. So that was fun. Anyway, um, so I am here to talk about Dollars for Scholars, um, which is extremely relevant for all of you this year. Um, it was started, by the way, in the 1990s by Mr. Kelly. So thank you, Mr. Kelly. Um, a couple things. Uh, so Dollars for Scholars coordinates the awarding of thousands of dollars in scholarships every year. Some sponsored by local businesses, alumni and their families, and some by our Dollars for Scholars chapter. And that's thanks to all the fundraising we do all year. So two things you should know about Dollars for Scholars. First, as you know, and as you're about to learn more about, college is expensive. Um, your kids should apply. This may seem obvious, but believe it or not, many students do not apply. We can't give awards to people who don't apply. So the scholarships are not all based on grades also. Um, so some are based on activities that they do or other qualities of a good human being that the, that the sponsors want to reward. Uh, the application, by the way, is not short, but there are good odds for getting a scholarship if you do apply, uh, and there's no shot if you don't. There are some scholarships, by the way, that are specifically aimed toward kids going into the trades. So that's something to keep in mind and spread that word because I don't think everybody knows that. One of them is $1,500. So, not small. The second thing is we need your support. So if you want to volunteer, that would be absolutely wonderful. Get involved with us, please do let us know. And also our fundraisers, if you can help out or if you can get involved. We have um, one, two that are coming up. One is going on right now, Hanford is selling bouquets. They'll give us a dollar for every one that they sell. It's a specially marked bouquet at Hanford. Uh, and then the second is our vendor fair, which is November 21st from 10 to 3. You can come up here, pick up some gifts or something for your home or for yourself, and also support DFS at the same time. Or you can make it simple, make a donation, um, or encourage someone else to who'd like to support the cause and the students. Uh, and keep your eyes open for more throughout the year. We might do some Super Bowl stairs, although I'm not really sure that's legal. So. Yeah. Anyway, um, the applications for the scholarships open in April, maybe end of March, so keep your eyes open for that. And they close near the end of April, so also be wary of that because once it closes, then it's done. Um, and that's basically it. They can start their profiles at any time, and a profile is kind of the longer part of it. So they could do that when they're bored. Yeah. Happy senior year, and I'll see Thanks, Jen. Okay. All right, so I didn't introduce myself because I'm assuming everybody already knows me, but just in case you don't, I'm Kristen Heidi. I'm one of the school counselors here at the high school. If your students have last day of day through pay, you, you should have or have been working with me through high school. Mr. Kelly, of course, over here to my right. He has the other half of the alphabet and our contact information if you need us. And I know we stressed this at junior night last year and during our junior conferences last spring as well. College application process can sometimes be super overwhelming. It can be a little scary. If you have questions, if you need help for anything, this is what we're here for. So please don't hesitate and feel free to reach out with any questions you may have.
And just for a little bit of what we're going to go over tonight, um, first I'm just going to go over some important reminders, just about some more housekeeping things with the, with the beginning of the school year. Open house this year, we are again going to have a virtual league, and the high school's open house is slated for October 7th. Uh, I think it's going to be a 6.30 start time, and I've heard it's going to be a very similar format to last year where, student, where teachers will have Google Meet links that we will get out to families. Um, we're going to host a virtual financial aid night this year. That's going to be on October 6th. And we're going to have a representative from RPI's financial aid that's going to give this virtual presentation on the 6th. So just throughout the evening, we're going to talk about the college admissions process. We're going to talk a little bit about testing, uh, college athletics, and financial aid. Oh, and I should say, if you have questions, feel free to ask as we proceed. So some college fairs. So as, as we're, you know, living and witnessing, life is getting a little bit back to normal, but we're not quite fully all the way there. So last year, with, with, with COVID being really kind of brand new to us, all of the college fairs were, and college rep visits were all virtual last year. So this year, we're seeing that there's a little bit of a hybrid for this. So Catholic every year typically hosts that big college fair at Hudson Valley. They're not going to have that this year, but instead they're having smaller in-person fairs. So if you go to their website, which is listed there, it will list for you all of the different uh, smaller fairs that they're having. But if you're interested in some local events, just know that um, Shen is hosting a fair on um, September 20th. Shalman is going to host one on September 22nd. Um, and I also saw on their website that some other local schools like Shaker are also going to host some smaller college fairs as well. So if you're looking to have some in-person face time with some college reps, that's a great local option uh, are those smaller college fairs. They are, they do also have some virtual options on their website too, uh, as well as NACAC. They also have a lot of different virtual college fair options as well. And lastly, you'll see Gilderland, they are going to have their local college fair, and that's going to be on September 27th from 6.30 to 8. Usually, or, or, or at least we try to get ahead of time what schools will be visiting Gilderland's fair. So we will definitely try to do that again this year. Um, if we're able to successfully get that, we'll go ahead and we'll send that information out to everyone via email. This year we are going to have in-person college reps come to the high school. At the very end of your um, packet, there is a schedule of the reps that we have so far come, scheduled to come into the high school. So if there is a college that's listed on there and you want to come have some FaceTime with the admissions rep from that school, let us know. We can definitely make that happen for you. Okay. Last year, we had all of our college rep visits virtual. I don't think it went very well. So I'm hoping that bringing them back in person will help attendance to those college visits. Uh, it really just increases get better. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. So next I'm going to talk a little bit about some incident admission options that we have for our students. So incident, incident admit, what that means is it, you are instantly applying to a college. Um, we do this for both of our local community colleges, so Hudson Valley and Schenectady, we will have instant admit days for those schools. As you'll see, Hudson Valley is going to be on October 21st, Schenectady is going to be on the 26th of October. And during this time, you will meet with an admissions representative from one of those schools. You will have your application pre-filled out before you meet with them. They'll waive their admissions fee. Uh, they'll take a look at your transcript. And they'll go ahead and they'll accept you on the spot for, for that school. Okay. I don't know yet if that's going to be in person or virtual. Do you know, Mr. Kelly? I don't know. Last year, it was virtual, so we'll just have to see whatever um, Hudson Valley and Schenectady is comfortable with as far as how they're going to format the incident of days. Uh, and then lastly, the College of St. Rose, for the past three or so years, they've also done an incident of day. We just don't have that date yet. Okay, so again, as soon as, 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 soon as we know this information, we'll definitely let you all know um, via email and uh, at least for, for the students as well, I will have a Google Classroom for the, for the counseling office. 
I'll definitely post all of our information that, that, that we get um, to that Google Classroom as well. Okay. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about AP classes and college and high school classes. So you may already have had some experience with these um, classes, taking them as sophomores and juniors. But just remember for AP classes, if you are enrolled in an AP class, it's our policy that you also take the AP exam associated with that class. So the AP, the, the fee is going to stay the same. It was $95 last year, and it's going to be $95 this year. Um, we'll always take cash. Uh, we, will, we will also take a check. There's also still uh, a store open on my school box. You can certainly pay that way as well. Um, we try to ask families to have their payment in by October 1st. Okay. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about the college and the high school classes. So these are our courses that are through Schenectady County Community College. And they are going to charge $64 per credit. They did not have a price increase. That's, that, that's the same amount that it was last year as well. So all of, most of our CHS classes are either three credits or four credits. So just depending on the course, just depends on how many credits you receive for the class. So if you do the math, a three credit class is going to equate to $192, and then a four credit class will be uh, $256. Okay. With the CHS classes, there is an online registration form that you need to fill out in order to register for the classes. Schenectady is being a little bit slow with their information. They told me by tomorrow they will have that link for registration. So again, once we get more and more information, we'll definitely push it out to families. So as soon as we have that registration link, I'll let everybody know. And registration for those courses open on September 13th. Uh, and that's going to be for fall classes and for full, full year classes. And then the deadline for the registration closure for that is going to be on October 6th. So you do have a couple weeks to fill out that online registration. All right, so just to talk a little bit more about some CHS information, since we are not residents of um, Schenectady County, Schenectady, SUNY Schenectady does require that we have a certificate of residency that shows you live in New York State. Um, we will have a representative from the town of Scotland that's going to come in to Voorheesville on September 22nd during lunch period, so 11.30 to 1 o'clock, to issue those certificate of residencies for students. Okay, Teachers will post the certificate of residency application on their website or on their Google Classroom, I should say. I will also have copies of those for students too, as will the town of New Scotland. So if you plan on registering for CHS classes and getting the credit, you have to prove you live in New York State. This is how you do it. Okay. If you do not go to, to the town of Spell when they're here during lunch period, you can certainly get the certificate of residency on your own. You would just need to go to your town hall um, to get that certified for you. Okay? Yeah, go ahead. You have to have a new one every single year. That's a very good question. So even if you submitted a certificate, certificate of residency last year for CHS classes, you will have to submit a new one this school year. Okay? And the town of New Scotland is a little bit lenient, so if you technically don't live in the town of New Scotland, but come and do it during during when while they're here at school, they'll give it to you anyway. So when seniors come and do that, they will need a copy of uh, an ID or just proof of residence as well. I know that that part is a little bit confusing, so let me know if you have questions. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So the kids can either give it right to me, or they can give it to their teacher. And then what we'll do is we'll collect them, and then, I, then we'll go ahead and mail them off to Schenectady. And then with, with the CHS classes, typically we hear that a C or better will transfer to any SUNY because it's within the SUNY system. Um, and it's really a lot of other colleges will also accept the credits too. And if you're curious about what classes um, have how many credits, this chart will just tell you. So our, our, our AP Bio, for example, that's going to be a fall class for SUNY Schenectady. SUNY Schenectady calls it Biology 1. That's the course number. It's a four-credit class, and that's how much it costs. Okay. 
And on your student schedule, it should have the designation of CHS after the course. Okay. This year for Senior English, we're still working on the traditional uh, college composition and literature and writing. We had some staff changes, so right now that course is not a uh, CHS class, only AP English is right now. We're exploring some options, we're hoping to get it to work. Um, but honestly, I don't really know if that's going to be an option. Yeah, so in the past, our senior English, that college composition and that literature and writing, that has been students can actually credit. We have some staffing changes, and students can actually is not approving them as a teacher. So it's likely that that class is not going to be college credit this year. Okay, at just the AP level. I'm, I'm trying, you know, we're, we're working on it. It's going to be saying no. I don't know if they're going to change their mind, but we're trying. Yeah. AP Economics is not a CHS class. It's just an AP class. Yep. It is, I'm sure you, 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 you probably know this, it is a two AP, it's both micro and macro. So that does have two AP exams at the end. Okay. All right, so next I'm going to talk a little bit about community service. We do have this as a graduation requirement for school. The um, district requires 15 total hours of community service. For National Honor Society, they do require 20. The hours for graduation must be completed in the student senior year, which starts on uh, July 1st. So anything that was maybe completed over the summer, that can absolutely count for your community service requirement. Last year, we used a Google form to log community service hours. to get that test done. Guys, if you have questions, just shout them out. I can't see your hands. All right, my next slide, in case you're still looking for test prep options, that's listed just all the different local options that will do test prep for you guys. All right? <laughs> all right, lastly, I'm going to talk about College Board score choice. So we talked about this at junior night last year. So most, most of the time, colleges will allow students to combine scores for the different um, SAT tests that they've taken. So let's say you took a March SAT and did really well in your reading, not so great on your math, now it's like a disco, and then you take it again in June and you score better on your math, 
You can send both of those scores to your college and then they'll take the best combination. And Mr. Kelly and I always hear college admissions people say, we're always looking for reasons to accept students. We're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. So they're, they're trying to give you the best possible combination of SAT scores possible, okay? <coughs> What's happening? We got some lights? Are these like emergency lights? It's back on? Let's see if we can get this on. All right. It's nice to see your faces again. Thanks for hanging with me. All right, any questions about the things I screamed at you? <laughs> okay. Mr. Kelly, it's you now. You're up. night obviously but uh, we'll get through it um, like Miss Heidi said I am Tim Kelly I'm one of the I'm the other high school guidance counselor last names L through Z probably I don't need to tell most of you that um, so yeah it's been a year and a half we're back great first day I think um, but you know now we're, we're right back into it you know all of a sudden it's normal again and your seniors or you the students who are seniors Getting those college applications done and done well is, uh, you know, one of one of the things Miss Heidi and I want to help you with. Um, before we get to the process, I want to talk about college sports. Um, you know, a lot of our students, a lot of students in general, would love to play college sports. I think uh, when you ask them when they're younger, they're all pretty confident that that's going to happen. And then as they get older, you know, not as many. But there are still some students here that want to play college sports. Hopefully, if that's you or your child, uh, they've already been recruited, they've already been offered a spot on a roster. If not, it's getting a little late for that. Um, in that case, you would need to be assertive. Um, I'm, I'm saying this not just as a school counselor, but as a parent of uh, two kids currently on college sports teams, it, it's a stressful time. And you want to make sure that coaches know about you Coaches uh, had a tough time recruiting this past year for obvious reasons, so put a highlight film together. Uh, send, send that out to coaches. Let the coaches know that you're interested in them, okay? And that might get them interested in you. Um, you see the, the second paragraph there. The NCAA no longer, or this year, is not requiring SATs or ACTs for future student athletes. They are still requiring a certain amount and a certain type of high school credit for each potential college athlete. That's the NCAA Clearinghouse. So if you are interested in playing college sports, make sure Ms. Heidi or I know about that so that we can just take a quick look and say, well, you better take Algebra 2 because that's required if you haven't already, okay? Okay, so the application process, I'm not going to go through it nitty gritty because we are going to have individual conferences with the students. Um, we are going to go into senior English classes and we are going to talk about the minutia with the students, okay? There's, there's a lot to it. It's not rocket science by any means, but we're gonna go through it and uh, you know, if students are paying attention, which I'm sure they will be, then uh, the mistakes will be fewer. Um, everybody in the room, hopefully, unless you're brand new to us, knows about Naviance and is familiar with the Naviance account and hopefully has started a resume on Naviance. Another thing we want you to do, we need you to do, is to put all of your potential colleges on your Naviance account. It's how we know you're interested in a school and it helps us with our record keeping, okay? Uh, we're also going to encourage you to create a Common App account if you're applying to more than one school or more than one school that the Common App works with. The Common App is a, a national application that works with about 900 different colleges, many of which are colleges that are popular with our students. So 
you know, it's just a more efficient way to do things rather than fill out nine or 10 or 15 applications. You fill out the common app, you might only have to fill out one main application. All right, this is just a screenshot of Naviance and a screenshot of the Common App. Um, there is a way to link Common App and Naviance, and that's something we won't get into tonight, but during our classroom visits, we will show the students how to do that, okay? By linking these two accounts, it allows us to send paperwork electronically, seamlessly, nothing gets lost in the mail these days, okay? All right, so, I don't want to go through everything that we talked about on junior night or at the junior conference last year, but I do want to remind the students, update your resume because you're going to be asking teachers for letters of recommendation. Don't ask them this week, but you know, you might want to ask them next week, especially if you're thinking about applying early. You're going to need your letters of recommendation done. Your teachers are going to need some time to do that. They are more than likely going to ask you for a copy of your resume when they agree to write a letter for you, all right? So if you didn't do that over the summer, like we recommended, you got a job to do now, okay? Uh, Ms. Heidi talked about the SATs and the ACTs. A lot of colleges have waived those requirements. Many of them are still accepting those scores, so if you test well, if you've been prepping for these silly things anyway, there are options, and I've recently sent out some emails telling you, here's the next SAT deadline, here's the next ACT deadline. Uh, if you want to take those tests, or wanted to retake those tests, you certainly have opportunities to do that, okay? And then write that essay. Um, I gave you the essay prompts back in the spring. They're easy to Google. If you just Google Common App Essay Prompts, you'll see the six or seven choices that you have. I'm very confident that your English teachers are going to be requiring that as one of your first projects this quarter. Okay, but you know, if you haven't started that already, that's something that you can do. Um, this, we've gone over this before, but we're gonna talk about it again just because it is so important. Early decision sounds like early action, but they're, they're very different. We have, we could probably count on one hand the number of students that apply under early decision because it's a binding agreement. That is you basically signing a contract, telling the college, I'm applying to you early. If you accept me, I promise, I give you my word that I'm going to attend your school. Okay, that's what early decision is, all right? You won't necessarily know financial aid at the time, so that's, that's kind of the risk, but the reward is the odds tend to be a little bit better of getting in, okay? So if you know for sure, I wanna go to school XYZ, it might be a reach for me, I might not get in, but if I get in, I know I can afford it and I know I'm gonna go there, well that's you, early decision, okay? That's, that's very few. Early action on the other hand is simply, I'm gonna get my paperwork in early, I'd like you to give me a decision early. And the decision could be, yes, you're accepted, no, you're denied, or in many cases it's, well, we're not quite sure yet, we're gonna put you into the regular pool of candidates, okay? So for those of you who, who have had a solid grades 9, 10, and 11, you're, you're very proud of your freshman, sophomore, and junior years, if the college you're looking at is applying or, or offers early action, absolutely, go for it. If you're a little bit embarrassed about 9th, 10th, and 11th grade, don't apply early. Have a great first half of senior year and then apply, okay? And then there is something that a few schools have called restricted early action. That's, that's not binding, but they don't want you to, to apply early to other schools. They want to be the only school to which you apply early. All right, yes. Good question. Um, a lot of things vary by college, but uh, typically May 1st is like the universal deposit deadline. All right, so once you've applied to college, once you've got all that paperwork done, all your letters in, all your tests taken and submitted, 
Then you're going to wait. You're going to wait a while in some cases. Um, but then you're going to start getting, hopefully, acceptances. You need to make sure you pay your deposit on time. Okay? And usually that's May 1st. Paying your deposit tells the college, you're the place I'm going to. Save me a dorm room. Save me a spot in the freshman class. If you miss that deadline, they have every right to give your spot away, and you're all of a sudden no longer accepted there. Okay? So pay your deposit on time. All right, the next slide, um, again, as Ms. Heidi said, we are going to have a financial aid night in early October. The FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid, back in my day, maybe in back in some of your days, it was called the FAF. Uh, the FAFSA is the main form. It's the first financial aid form you'll fill out. And I would encourage every family here to fill it out at least once. You might not get any financial aid, but you might, okay? If you don't fill out the FAFSA, you cannot even get a government loan for college, okay? And those tend to be a little bit better interest rates. So the FAFSA opens up for these seniors on October 1st, okay? So you can fill out the FAFSA even before we have financial aid night on the 6th, but you might want to wait to hear what the guy from RPI says about it, okay? But in October, I would encourage you to get the FAFSA done. And mom and dad, I'm talking to you guys. You know, your kids probably don't know what your income was two years ago or how much money you have in the bank. All right, so parents really need to do this. Um, there, there used to be um, lots of talk about the Excelsior Scholarship. It is still out there. It is still wonderful, but not everybody qualifies. This is not free college for everyone. Um, you know, you've got to have under a certain combined household income, and then there are other strings attached as well. But, you know, if you, you know, if you qualify for the Excelsior Scholarship, you'd certainly want to think about applying for it after reading through what the, what the other uh, strings that are attached. Okay. Um, obviously, there's a million websites out there. The Naviance website, hopefully the students have it bookmarked. Um, the College Board website is where you register for the SATs. Um, if you need to do a secondary, more invasive financial aid form called the CSS Profile, your colleges will let you know that. That's a College Board product. You get to that through the College Board website also. And the College Board website also has a wonderful college search tool. If you're still trying to put a list of colleges together, the College Board search engine is probably probably the best one out there. Okay, ACT registration, uh, different financial aid sites, including the FAFSA site, which is a .gov site. Okay, uh, and then the finaid.org and the fastweb.com. Those are some places where you can get an estimate of how much need you might have and some other scholarship opportunities that are out there. And then the, the NCAA Eligibility Center for those students who think they might want to play Division I or Division II college sports. They need to be approved by the NCAA. Okay. Students, this is a real thing. Um, you know, I, I know Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and uh, all those other things that I don't know are out there. Um, but. What you put on social media is there forever. And sometimes college admissions officers, sometimes future employers are gonna dig back into your history. So just be smart about that. Okay, and then I guess in the handout there are, there's our SUNY cheat sheet that gives you an overview of the SUNYs. Not to push SUNY, it's just a great place with a lot of information. Um, there's the list of college rep visits yeah. for colleges that are coming, okay? Um, so, you know, essentially, you know, we're back. We're back full steam ahead. Um, you know, we would love for you guys to just have just an amazing first quarter, first half. I'm sure your parents would want that as well because, uh, you know, those grades will go to colleges as well, okay? Um, you know, the excitement will wear off of being back and then it'll get into the mundane, but, you know, you're going to get back in the swing of things pretty quickly. We're all going to build our stamina up. 
And uh, you know, like Miss Heidi said, this is your last first day. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's good. Here at Lorysville Central School District. So hopefully, we're gonna have a great, great year. When should transcripts be requested? Okay. When should transcripts be requested? When when your student applies to college, they're gonna do that through you know, either the college's application or Common App, they simply need to let us know that they've done that. When, if Common App and Naviance are linked, we will know that just from that. Once the student has applied to college, we will send the transcript out, okay? It's, it's less formal than, you know, su you know, requesting your college transcript. I mentioned it briefly, yeah. All right, so just to, hammer, just to hammer home like how this is all gonna look like. So like Mr. Kelly said, we're gonna start our senior conferences probably next week. Early next week, we're gonna start our senior conferences. We're gonna meet individually with each of our seniors. We're gonna talk about where you're applying. What is your deadline going to be? Who are you gonna ask for letters of recommendation? Have you started your college essay? So we're really gonna get a good picture of where your, your student is at in the process. Uh, we're aiming to hit senior English classes probably the third week in September. And during that time, Mr. Kelly and I are going to present Naviance. We're going to present Common App. We're going to show students what exactly they need to do in Naviance for us. So Mr. Kelly mentioned adding where they're applying to college. We're going to talk to them about linking Common App and Naviance together so the two programs can talk to each other. Um, that enables us to send, like Mr. Kelly saying, the transcript. We're also going to send letters of recommendation electronically through our Navion system to your students' uh, college that they're applying to. Okay. So again, during that, that time we come into their English class, we're really going to break it down for the kids. Here, don't forget, here's where you're supposed to have done your resume. Here's where you're going to add colleges you're applying to. We're going to go over to Common App. Here's how you do your Common App. Here's how you link them together. Because listing your college is on Navion, like Mr. Kelly said, that's how we know where your student is applying to. If your student doesn't have a college listed in their Navion account, we don't know they've applied there, therefore we can't send the transcript and letters of recommendation electronically. So it's a very roundabout way to answer and, and just to finish up on that, your students will actually, A, ask the teacher for a letter of recommendation, and then B, make that request formal by going on Naviance and requesting that, and the teacher will load their letter onto Naviance. Yeah, so everything will be done electronically. And, and again, we're gonna go over that process with students as well during the English time lesson that will come in. We'll show them how to request a letter of recommendation through Naviance as well. Um, and, you know, like we're saying, we're gonna be in constant communication with your students so we know when their deadline is going to be. Is it early? Is it regular decision? Um, obviously, we're going to prioritize the students that have early deadlines, so we'll make sure to process their applications first, and then we'll process, you know, everyone's as the deadlines come up, um, and that's, and by, by the time Thanksgiving rolls around, it's likely your student will be done with their process. Yeah, I didn't mention Thanksgiving, but, you know, that's typically a target I throw out there, try to have your applications done by Thanksgiving. If you want to put a little bit more pressure on yourself, try to have them done by November 1st. Okay? It, it's certainly possible to do all this by November 1st. That's a wonderful question, Mrs. Jones. Thank you for saying that. So if your student asks someone in the community for a letter of recommendation, that's absolutely fine. It happens all the time. What I'll ask is that person email me or Mr. Kelly that letter of recommendation and we can submit it electronically through now. Yes. Um, if your student already took a course like in a college outside of a college in high school, do we have them send the transcript to the college, or do we have the college send the transcript here, and then you send it, it not, like put it in Naviance, and then send it as a whole entity? Yeah. When when your student takes a college class, whether it's college in the high school or the the Hudson Valley classes that were offered this summer, or other types. Your student's gonna to go to college next year. That college is gonna want the official transcript from that other college. So if it's Schenectady Community College, College in the High School classes, you're gonna to need to contact Schenectady's registrar and we'll tell you how to do that at the end of the year. 
send it directly from one college to another so that it's official. Okay. And typically, like Mr. Kelly is saying, this process happens at the end of the school year. So like Schenectady's transcripts, for example, they won't be ready until the first week of July. Um, and so you're sending that official final transcript from Schenectady to whatever college you're deciding to go to, and then they can decide, I'm going to approve this credit or, or not. Okay. But if you, took a call, if you took a Hudson Valley class this past summer, which a lot of our students did, we don't, we don't really need that here. Your students typically don't need that credit at high school, but you're going to want that credit when you go to college. So you'll send that, you'll request Hudson Valley send that to the college that they choose. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. What about the uh, kids who take English at Vocab, not English? You had mentioned that they would be doing some of the writing in English class. Yeah. Are they doing that at Vocab as well? No, but we're going we're gonna to get to that together with them individually. Okay. Yes, absolutely. We'll, yep. Yep. Now it's the question. Yeah. No, because that is counting for high school credit here, you don't need to do that. Okay. So we're talking about specifically classes you took outside through a college that you're looking to get college credit for. Okay. Yeah, so if you took BYU Health, yeah. it's already on your transcript, your high school transcript. What else? Yes. <laughs> um, so this is outside of the whole college transcript like transcript or entity actually all together. But when it comes for like the whole senior timeline throughout the year, will we be getting advance notice as to like the activities and experiences that they'll be having just for timeline purposes? So, so yeah, yeah. So yes, um, that won't come from us necessarily, but it'll come from either the, the senior class or just through school, um, not SNN, school messenger. All right, so, but will it be timely instead of, you know, rather than, like, oh, next week this is going on. Senior night, six days from now. Yeah. <laughs> like, will we have good notice so that we can, you know, arrange our lives appropriately? Sure. We'll, we'll try. Okay. <laughs> we'll try. So, yes, what I was referring to is you're going to send the, the transcript officially at the end. There is actually a spot on Common App that asks if you've taken previous college work. So that's where I would suggest you list that. And I also think the difference is the CHS classes are going to be on your transcript. Those will not be on your transcript from us. So I think that's maybe, maybe the difference. Well, again, your student can list that on his or her common app. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, well, you, I mean, you certainly can do that. Um, it's, it's not necessarily something I would recommend because I think there's a lot of colleges that are just going to take it, take your word for it on the Common App, and then you know if you're lying on the Common App, you know you're gonna you're gonna prove it later by sending your transcripts. You you certainly can send those transcripts wherever, but you know that's uh, yeah. Thanks. What else we got? 
We had the rain, we had power outage. It's been a wonderful uh, senior night. All right, well, um, please keep in touch with us. We're here to help. Um, you know, uh, parents, students, we, we want to hear from you. Yeah, and do me a favor before you leave. Try and fill out that blue feedback form for me. I'm especially curious if you all would like to have these events in person or virtually. So at least give me that feedback, what, what, what you'd prefer. And again, there are, there are pens back there. And you can just leave them on the cart on your way out. That'd be great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. There's no way that was still going. After a power outage. Hold on, I gotta figure out how to stop this. Hey! What's going on? I don't even stick it microphone. something. I don't want to stop this. Sorry, I do have a question that I didn't think of. And I'm, hold on, I'm trying to figure out how to get everyone seated. I'm trying to figure out how to stop this. Anyone know? How did Mr. Shea turn it on? Oh boy. Oh, is it this